how do you write May in calligraphy? Well, we're going to show you a few different ways. I'm Jillian. I'm going to show you faux calligraphy, bounce lettering, and brush pen calligraphy. And I'm Jordan. I'm going to show you how to do flourishing and how to use a pointed pen and an iPad. So let's get started with faux calligraphy. You can do faux calligraphy with any normal pen you have. I'm using this gel pen. So the first thing we'll do is we'll write the letter in monoline. For the M, we'll make a stem coming down, a straight stem. Then we'll come up, curve around at the top, and come back down. We'll do that again, except this one is going to curve back up at the bottom and end right about there. So now to change it into faux calligraphy, we're going to thicken certain areas of the letters. Now we're going to do this anywhere that the letters are coming in a downward direction. You may notice that my letters are along this slant angle. I'm using calligraphy guide sheets. So all of my downstrokes are a slant instead of straight up and down. Okay, so we're going to start by um, making a parallel line along this, this first stem. I like to start at the top by making a little line coming out to the left, then following this down as evenly as possible, and then finishing at the bottom. Now since this curve um, has a curve at the top, we're going to sort of taper into this line coming down here, and then we'll do it again, but the only difference here is that this curves back down at the bottom, so we'll meet it back at the baseline. This is called the baseline. And then to make it look a little nicer, we can do an entry element on the M that looks something like this. So the A starts with this oval. Now on this part, we are coming down, so we're going to add a parallel line here that tapers to meet it at the top and bottom of the curve. Now the next stroke is going to look like this. It's going to come down go up and curve around. So this is a really long stroke. I'm going to break it up into smaller pieces. So we'll start, start right about here so that as I come down along my slant angle, it's going to hit the edge of the oval and then curve it at the bottom. Next, I'll draw a line out to the right and connect it up like this. So this, the width of this line, it can be about three pen strokes. So like if you did three pen strokes next to each other, that's a good rule of thumb. I mean, it could be however big you want, but that's just a good, a good uh, rule of thumb for you. Okay. So then we're going to bring this curve up over at the top and back down again. I'll stop it at the bottom here, curving inward. You'll notice that I'm trying to stay parallel to my diagonal lines. Add a thick stroke here. Then we'll finish off this part of the Y up to the top. Okay, and then lastly, we have this descending loop. So we're going to start by just going straight down, curving around at the bottom, coming back up, and don't cross through that line. Then we'll add this uh, shaded piece. So we're going to leave it hollow on the inside, which is why we aren't crossing through the tail right here. We're going to lift our pen exit out this way. So especially if you were doing this on blank paper that didn't have lines on it, this part would be clearly open. Next I would like to show you brush pen calligraphy. So this is the brush pen that I'll be using. Um, it has a flexible tip, so if you press hard on your pen, you'll get a thicker line, and if you press lighter on your pen, it's a thin line. So I'm going to recreate this, but using a brush pen. So I'm going to start with heavy pressure creating this stem coming down. Then at the bottom, using light pressure, head up, curve around at the top, add pressure, and hit the bottom. Same thing, light pressure up, all the way to the top of the curve, and then after I start to curve back down is when I add pressure. Slowly re release the pressure at the bottom so that as I start to curve, it turns back into a thin stroke. Ovals are tricky but it's the same idea, thick stroke here, thin stroke here. Okay, now I'm going to do, so this is again a really long stroke so you can break it up. I'm going to do the first part. I can lift my pen here if I want, which I'm going to go up, down, and lift it again at the bottom to readjust my hand and finish off 
with this thin up curve. So the last thing left is our descending loop and exit stroke. So I'm going to come down, curve around at the bottom. So at this point, I will have released all of the pressure to make it a thin line. Finish the loop. And then here, maybe I can kind of extend that line out for something different and mimic it at the beginning of my M. So that is basic brush pen calligraphy. And then the last style is bounce lettering. Bounce lettering has a little bit more of a flowy look to it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is instead of creating a, down, a, a stem that's straight line, I'm going to start it with a curve and I'm also going to make it a little bit shorter then I made these stems because we're going to add some variation in the height. So this will start with a curve. And again, it's a little shorter. Then this piece, I'm going to come up higher. And then this last piece will be shorter again and dip below the baseline. Do you see with just making these three individual pieces a little bit different, it completely changes the look. So now I'll make the oval for the A. Then this piece, I'm going to dip below the baseline, come back up, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a variation instead of the traditional way of doing the Y with a compound curve. I'll just do an underturn here. And then for bounce lettering, I always like to make the descending loop have a little bit of a fun, sort of horizontal wavy flourish to it. So that is our bounce lettering. Okay, so it looks like Jordan is back and she followed along with my lesson and it looks great. It looks slightly different from mine, but that's the cool thing about calligraphy is everyone can have their own style. So Jordan, do you want to take over and do flourishing? I will, but um, I also want to point out that we do have free resources for all of these styles. So check the description and grab your free resources for your favorite style. Next up, we have flourished. And before we do flourishing, I'm going to show you another way to write the M. Jillian showed you two slightly different ways here. Another way that's based more on the copper plate style, which I will show you um, copper plate with a pointed pen in a second, but a different style of M. We actually start at the bottom and come up and then down like this and then back up and down. This is another way to write the M. Um, usually this part right here has a little dot on it. So for flourishing, what we're going to do is we're going to take certain parts of the letters and extend them. So this style of M is great for flourishing because you can ex make extensions from all of these different places. So for example, I could continue this line coming this way. Um, I also like to sometimes continue this part of the line this way. And then we can also add a flourish on the end, end of this um, the bottom part of it. I know this looks confusing right now, but I'm going to show you in a second how to flourish this. So I'm actually going to start right here and come down. And instead of finishing right here, I'm going to keep going in kind of a spiral. So I'm going to keep going into a big spiral. Then I'm going to make this down stroke here. Then when I come up, I'm going to keep going and wrap around my letter. This. And then finally, I'm going to start right at this point again, come down, but I'm going to continue and go below and add a flourish to the bottom. I'm going to swing out to the right, come around, and then come back down. So this looks very fancy, and it is. It's very um, elaborately flourished. But all I did was add extensions to these parts of the letter. Now I'm going to continue with the rest of the word. I'm going to make my A and then the Y. Now my loop of the Y is going to cut through this part of the flourish. And with flourishing, you can actually use a pencil to plan things out ahead of time. Sometimes when you do it right away with ink, things don't always work out and you have things like this happen where you might run into part of a flourish. But I'm going to actually continue the exit stroke and go above the word and around. So if I were to redo this again, I might make the bottom part of the M 
either much longer so it doesn't create this weird spot right here or a little shorter to leave room for the Y. So this is a very fancy way to write May. So I was following along and I did the exact same thing where it felt like the Y was kind of fluttered within the, um, the flourish of the M exit part. So instead I did it again and uh, did just the top of the M, didn't do the bottom, and then I was able to have more room for the Y. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, with flourishing, there's so many different ways you can do it. There's never a right answer and there's always so many possibilities. So yeah, we had a similar top of the M, but then yeah, Jillian used the bottom of the Y to add the flourish in this area. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, so if I were to redo this, I'm going to try to make this loop a little bit shorter. Let me just use a pen here. I'm going to try to make this part a little bit shorter so I can give myself more room for the Y. So here, I'm going to rewrite it again. Making the stem with a big spiral. Downstroke, and then this upstroke, we're going to flourish here. Okay, so now this part, I'm going to be mindful of how far out I'm going with this flourish. I don't want to go too far to the right, so I'll just keep it really short right there. And then maybe I can also compensate and remember that I have a Y coming up. So maybe if I need to expand any of these connections a little bit to give myself enough room. And then I'm going to make the Y and make it cross through right here. Come up over the word. Come back around and finish like this. So now these strokes still interact with each other, but it looks less cluttered than it does over here. And there's still ways to improve this. There's always going to be ways that you can improve. For example, this part I might have made come out more here so it matches the shape of some of the other um, ovals, but that gives you a good idea of how to flourish May. So now I'm going to show you how a pointed pen works. This is a pointed pen and this piece right here that is metal. This is called a nib. There's different kinds of nibs. The one I'm using right now is called a Nico G nib and it's at an angle like this. This is called an oblique holder. So I have a jar of ink off to the side. I'm going to dip my pen into the ink and I'm going to show you just a basic copper plate way of writing the M. So I'm going to use this style M and I'll write the word in copper plate with a pointed pen. So a pointed pen is kind of similar to a brush pen in that when you press down, you can create thick strokes. So by applying pressure, the tines of the nib are opening up and allowing more ink to flow out. And so that's how I'm getting thick lines and thin lines. The point of this is very sharp. So when I'm not applying any pressure, it's just only using the sharp point of the pen. And that's how it creates contrast. So this is copper plate written with a pointed pen. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another style called Spencerian that is also usually written with a pointed pen. So again, I have ink off to the side over here that I'm dipping in. You can see the ink on my nib. You do have to dip periodically as you're writing as it starts to run out. So the Spencerian style is kind of similar to cursive. It actually was the precursor to cursive. Now this, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try again on that. <laughs> that doesn't look as nice as I was hoping for. So the beginning of the M is this oval shape with a shade right there. Spencerian is very delicate as well. And it's also usually written at a smaller scale compared to something like copper plate. Okay, so this is a basic Spencerian way to write May. I want to show you how to use an iPad to do calligraphy. And I actually really like doing Spencerian on my iPad. While you're getting your iPad out, I was wondering, since I don't have a pointed pen on me, um, I did it with a brush pen and I think it looked 
I mean, it looks okay. Um, I think if anyone watching wants to like go back and rewatch this video again after you do the whole thing, um, just because it might help to, to repeat what we've uh, talked about so far, um, then feel free to do that. Okay, sorry, Jordan, go ahead and show iPad calligraphy. Yeah, you can, you can do it with a brush pen too. Um, and the way that an iPad works, I'm using an Apple Pencil, the white part, the white stylus that I'm holding is called an Apple Pencil. And then um, on the iPad, you can have different brushes. They're called brushes. It's just the tool that you're using um, to write with. So just to show you, it works similarly to a brush pen. This brush that I designed, this is called our Spencerian brush, where you can get thin strokes and thick strokes. And so you use a an Apple Pencil to add pressure, and that gives you thick and thin contrast. This is how to write May in Spencerian on the iPad. So I'm adding pressure to create these delicate shades. This is not a very overly shaded script. And the cool thing about Spencerian is that you can also add flourishes, and this is usually called ornamental penmanship. So I'm going to show you some really fancy flourishes for this M. This is my favorite part about Spencerian. Also, my favorite part about using the iPad is that you can undo. So if you make a mistake or something didn't turn out just how you wanted it, you can undo like I just did. Like that. <laughs> I saw that I was going to have the same problem that I ran into before where I was going to not have room for the Y. And I'm going to finish this with a flourish on the right to balance it out. Okay, so that's a fancy way to write it in Spencerian. Now, one more thing I want to show you on the iPad. We actually have a brush that is built for doing modern calligraphy, and it's color changing. So it changes color as you add pressure. I chose blue and purple as my primary and secondary color. And you can see anytime I'm making a thin stroke, the color is blue. And anytime I make a thick stroke, it's purple. And you can change what colors you want to show up. But this is really cool because it lets you practice or it lets you visualize as you're practicing where your pressure is, anywhere that it's the the darker color, the purple color, um, is where you're adding pressure. Another cool thing about using the iPad is you can write on different layers. So I, ha I actually have my guidelines on a separate layer. So if I hide them, then all we're left with is the lettering. So I love using my iPad to practice. Some people might think that it's cheating because you're not using a real pen on paper, but it does take some time to get used to. Um, we do have this color changing brush available for free, so check the description if you would like to download it and try using it on your iPad. Yeah, I think my favorite part of that brush is the color changingness of it because it just makes it look uh, so so cool. And you could do the same thing like on paper with a brush pen. You could um, take a different color or even the same color and go back over it and it's going to darken the strokes make i mean obviously it's not a different color in this example but just darkening the thin strokes or changing the color uh, makes it look really cool so yeah there are that. Ways, like you can blend brush pens too like there's a like if you have um a pink and a blue brush pen there is a way that you can actually blend them together um, we have a different video about that but yeah it's sometimes it's a lot easier to create cool effects on the ipad just because it's done digitally but then there's also a satisfaction of using real pens on paper I want to show one last bonus way of writing uh, the word May. This is going to be super quick. It's writing it in a capital letter style using a brush pen. So we're going to use the um, thin upstrokes and thick downstrokes rule that is in calligraphy, but we're just going to apply it to capital letters. So I'll do it here pretty small. So I'm going to write May up, light pressure, down, heavy pressure, up, light pressure, down, heavy pressure, up, light down heavy, horizontal lines like the A, you can leave um, thin or light pressure. Okay, and then, so there are certain times, like you saw that for this Y, both of these were going in the downward direction. Both of these lines go down, down. So you'd wanna choose one of them to be thin and one of them to be thick. And 
um, I think it makes more sense for this one to be thick right here. So you could apply this to um, your capital letter style and just do light pressure up, heavy pressure down. Thanks again for watching. Hope you learned a lot and got inspired by these calligraphy styles. And again, make sure to check the description for links to all of our resources for these calligraphy tools and styles. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, give it a thumbs up so that we know you watched the whole thing and subscribe to our channel so you can see all of our calligraphy tutorials. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.